Welcome back to Entertainment Tonight's Charlie's Angels Uncovered. Kate Jackson was the first actress hired and was responsible for coming up with the name Charlie's Angels. During her four seasons on the show, Kate developed a reputation for standing her ground on the set. And that determination would later help Kate in the fight of her life. I never felt, why me, why me? I just felt, okay, this is the way it is, and these are the things that I have to do. That Kate Jackson never did ask why me says an awful lot about who she is and how strong a woman she's had to become. Charlie! A trophy! A floor! On the show, she seemed nearly invincible. But after Kate left in 1979, she would learn how fragile life could become. It happened during her work on Scarecrow and Mrs. King when she awoke one morning feeling restless. I sat up in bed and I said, I gotta have a mammogram. And I have no idea why. Kate's intuition wound up saving her life. Because of that, you know, they can find breast cancer so, when it's in such an early stage that the cure rate is, is there. And luckily for me, I'm one of those that it was found when it was so tiny that um, I'm cured. It took a partial mastectomy and radiation, but to this day, Kate remains cancer-free. That, however, was just a prelude for what was to follow a few years later when Kate got some more disturbing news. I was born with a tiny hole in my heart that got larger and larger, and it's been um, sewn up now. So for the first time in my life, I have a normal heart, and I feel great. This was Kate in 1994, just six weeks after undergoing open heart surgery to correct a lifelong problem she never knew she had. In 1996, she reflected further on the life-threatening ordeal. I used to wonder, you know, when the jogging craze was first happening, how, how come I could only go two blocks? But I thought, well, you know, it's just um, it's uh, because I'm out of shape. So now I have a perfect heart, and I've never had one before, which, and it's a wonderful feeling, let me tell you. It was while in intensive care that Kate heard from a forceful old friend intent on reaching her. Nobody can reach you in intensive care. A phone call can't, you can't call intensive care and say, hi, Cher did though, <laughs> you know. They're handing me this phone. Little did I know they were getting ready to pull a tube out of my back that was going to feel terrible. And I'm just beginning to talk to Cher, and there's this jerk, but everything's okay, and I have no idea how she got through to the emergency room. While Kate has continued to work in a variety of TV movies over the years, the woman who made her name as one of Charlie's angels finally found a real-life angel of her own. What a big boy. What a big boy. Three years ago, single and with three marriages behind her, Kate realized her longtime dream of becoming a mother when she adopted her son Taylor as a newborn. I got him when he was just a few hours old. And, and it was an unbelievable, you know. I never knew how much um, love there is of such a special sort because you actually are in love with your baby. I got a crow. I'm the most wonderful, special, and beautiful boy that I know. I didn't know I could get baby food all over me and just say, Oh, Mommy looks funny like Taylor with baby food all over him. I had no idea that life would change so much and that you'd just look at everything differently. I've never felt so happy in my life or so complete. And um, I've actually never had more fun, although I've never gotten less sleep. With a clean bill of health and a little one filling her heart, Kate is a woman who has survived some tough lessons in living and has learned to count her blessings each and every day. It wasn't great learning the hard way, but at least, you know, when you come out on the other side, you really, um, you've learned a lot. I've learned a lot, really have. Coming up on Charlie's Angels Uncovered. It was the poster every boy had on his wall. Now we've got the never before seen outtakes from that famous poster photo shoot. I said, why don't you just douse your hair and see what happens? The details of Farrah's divorce from Lee Majors and their fight over their mansion. Plus, her stormy 17 year relationship with Ryan O'Neill. Why is it important to have a mm -hmm. strong man? Who would want a weak one? <laughs> That's next. Tell us who's your favorite Charlie's Angel. Was it Farrah?
Kate, Jacqueline, Cheryl, Shelly, or Tanya. Just click over to our ET website to cast your vote. Welcome back to Charlie's Angels Uncovered. Almost 20 years after it left the airwaves, there will be a new Charlie's Angels on the big screen. Drew Barrymore and Cameron Diaz will star, and the role of the third angel has kept Hollywood guessing. I play uh, the more brainy, suburban, not apparently sexy kind of, you know, I'm, I'm like Jacqueline Smith of the Charlie's Angels. Cameron Diaz with a reported $12 million salary is in, and Drew Barrymore is starring and producing. But who will complete the trio for the new Charlie's Angels movie? Posh Spice reportedly wanted the role, but producers didn't offer it to her. Newcomer Penelope Cruz has been mentioned, and Tandy Newton was said to have taken the part, but has since dropped out. And now the rumored frontrunner is Ally McBeal's Lucy Liu. But whoever it turns out to be, they won't be reprising any old characters. Oh, that's terrific. Well, actually, I think we'd work on it um, being new angels, but paying homage and respect to the old ones. Two characters are said to be returning in the big screen adaptation. Bill Murray is reported to be close to signing as John Bosley, and John Forsyth told us he would like to return as the voice behind the speakerphone. We're talking, and uh, we'll see. I'd love to do it. Original angel Jacqueline Smith thinks a contemporary remake will appeal to today's audience and wouldn't be opposed to making an appearance. I'd have to really fall in love with it. I mean, we've sort of all moved on, but, it, you know, I would never say never if, if the role were interesting. Cheryl Ladd told us that she is proud to have been part of something that people loved so much and would be interested in doing a cameo. Oh, I don't know. That might be really fun. That might be great. If it's the right thing, if it would be something really fun, why not? Absolutely. The movie will have one striking difference from the series, the absence of weaponry. We don't, you know, carry guns or anything like that. It's all hand-to-hand -hand combat. The sexy, clean red swimsuit, the dazzling smile, and that free-flowing blonde hair. It was the poster that hung on bedroom walls all over the world and made Farrah Fawcett a millionaire. And now we can show you the never-before-seen outtakes. The clingy red swimsuit is famous, but these rare pictures are being seen for the first time anywhere. Photographer Bruce McBroom took these sexy shots of Farrah in 1976, just before Charlie's Angels made its first season debut. She trusted me from past photography. She knew me. She felt comfortable with me. And uh, as a consequence, she was able to be very much herself and just very open and very scantily clad. A publisher had contacted McBroom asking him to take pictures of Farah. He said he was going to do a poster uh, and it had to be sexy and her hair had to be perfect and she had to be in a bikini and uh, makeup and uh, there was a laundry list of what he wanted in this photograph. McBroom went to Farah's house and just the two of them got down to the task of shooting. For this she went in, did her hair, did her makeup, came out in a uh, white bathing suit and said what do you think of this and we started taking pictures meanwhile in the back of my mind I'm thinking you know this is not a bikini I'm probably already in trouble on that front <laughs> she said well you know I don't have a bikini here that I really like but she said well, let me go show you something else and she came out in the suit the suit that's on the poster and uh, I think there was no question in my mind who needs a bikini? <laughs> the color was great. It just fit her like a, a glove. And uh, I said, it's fine with me, Farah. They tried a variety of poses on an Indian blanket McBroom had been using as a car seat cover. After he knew he had the perfect shot in the very revealing suit, he used up his last roll of film as she cooled off with a hose. And I said, hey, Farah, well, I've got some film in this camera. Uh, why don't you just douse your hair and see what happens? As you can see, her mascara is running, her makeup's running, and to me, uh, those are the sexiest pictures I took that day. The publisher called me and was very upset. He wasn't going to pay me. She wasn't in a bikini. He hated the pictures. She had all of the film. 
finally she gave him the pictures. She said, this is the one you'll use. He published it. In six months, they sold seven million posters at two bucks a copy. Vera made millions off her percentage agreement with the publisher, and McBroom says he had agreed beforehand to be paid a fee up front. If anyone had said to me, look, we won't pay you for the poster, but we'll give you a penny a poster or a whatever, I would have said, are you kidding? I, you know, I need to be paid for this. Later, I worked out that a penny a poster on uh, seven million would be uh, $70,000. Maybe I should have taken the percentage. <laughs> Coming up on Entertainment Tonight's Charlie's Angels Uncovered. Jacqueline Smith talks about the obsessive fans who stalk the Angels and how the show took a toll on their marriages. I'm sure you're talking about the divorces that took place. And, uh, you know, the relationships weren't meant to be. And why Farrah decided to walk out on the show that made her a star. That's not me. That's not what I feel that I can do best. Now, Farrah's former manager reveals the secret settlement to the lawsuit. I'll tell you now for the first time. That's next.